Welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy Hester. This is our last video for the year, and I thought the best way to end this year is to look back on the supplies that I reached for most because I've definitely been able to see a theme as I've looked back at the year and as I've been packing and packing and packing, like to go out on location to paint or trips. And so I just thought, let's look at what I've been consistently using and that will be our video for this week. I've got a cup of tea. You may wanna grab a cup of tea. You will not need a sheet of paper to write things down because I will have everything listed below with the links for the supplies that I mentioned. I have a video from last year where I did my favorites from the year. So I'll link that below. I also have a list on my website with all my favorites and I continually update that. So you can always go there if you're needing a reminder of things that I use. Let's start this video this way. If you followed me for a while, you know that the beginning of the year started with a trip that I went on. Grady and my mom, we went to Florida. I packed the most ridiculous amount of supplies. Like I came across that picture the other day and I was like, what in the world, what is happening? So after that trip, I realized, let's get this under control. I knew I had two more big trips coming later in the year, and I thought I really need to pare down my supplies and stop taking the entire art store with me when I go out painting. So I've really worked on that all through the year. The things that I used in the studio were the same things that I was taking out on location and vice versa. I just wanted to find the things that I loved using. So that is where some of these things come in. First things first, let's put the glasses on so I can see everything. Okay, what shall we start with? I know at some point I'm gonna put you overhead when we start swatching some things. So let me show you the things that we do not need to swatch. Mm. Palettes. I have been obsessed with these plastic, like flower shaped palettes for a while. For me, they are the perfect size like well. I have four of these and I just really love them. I can use them in the studio. They're easy to throw in my bag and they kind of stack nicely. If I'm going to take them out, if I'm gonna be taking out my acrylics. The other thing I'm totally obsessed with, it feels like a total addiction, is that like when the paint dries, I love coming in in the morning and like peeling off the paint. <laughs> It's very satisfying. If you've got thick enough leftover dried paint, it's just extremely satisfying. In fact, sometimes I'm like, I really need to be doing something productive and I'm like, I can't stop peeling the paint. Okay, so these are great. I think I got these though, maybe at Jerry's. I can't remember. I'll try to find a link for these. I'm not sure if I'll be able to find one. I think I've only found them in my local art store. What else? Oh, another thing that I've absolutely loved, and I am kicking myself for not buying two of these because I've not been able to find another one. This is a palette that I love. We got this in Santa Fe at an art store, and it's a collapsible travel palette. I use it in the studio. I have another bucket like this that has like three bins or three wells, and I used to like it, but this is a little smaller. It's like the perfect size. So it collapses like this. Mine doesn't even collapse all that well anymore because it's so corroded with paint. I'd love to have a studio and then one that's just always in my bag, but it packs down really light or really small. I love having multiple wells because like the big one I use for my dirty, dirty paint. And then I have like a semi-dirty, like if this one gets repulsive, then I have one here that I can use for cleaning. And then I'd like to have one well right here that is clean water if I actually need some clean water. So this has been wonderful. I love it. The other thing I've been reaching for this year, this is a new medium that I found that I really like. It's airbrush medium. It's Liquitex acrylic medium. What I really liked about it, it is literally the consistency of water. And I like dipping my brush in this instead of water because this is going to bind to the canvas a lot better. You don't necessarily need this if you're painting on paper because paint and paper just kind of, even if, it's, if paint is thinned down, really thin, it will just bind a lot better. But for canvas paintings that I'm gonna be selling, I want to make sure, especially some of those first layers that are gonna be thinner, I want them bound really well. So I have loved this. I use this every day. The other thing I've continued to reach for and constantly throw in my bag are these Posca markers, the big ones that have the big nibs like this. My favorite is the beige. My second favorite is the ivory and then I have a white. I, don't, 
I really never use the white. Beige is basically what I use a lot. Sometimes I'll use the white to like erase things, but a lot of times it will pick up either paint that's still wet or if I have anything water soluble, and so then it doesn't become white, but I'm fine with that. It just kind of, it's basically like to knock things back a little bit, push things back. So those three go in my bag. If I'm really wanting to be light, I just take the beige or the white. The beige is also nice for like blocking in a person. It's a nice like Caucasian white um, flesh, Caucasian flesh tone or color. So I've liked that. I've continued to love and only use my Derwent water brushes. I use the two sizes. I use the big square nib. I like that one a lot. I find when I'm out, I can get things down very, very quickly. And then I will also buy the largest, which isn't all that large, but just round nib. So I do have a list on my website of favorite sketchbooks, but what I have been going to pretty much consistently now when I'm going out on location are my own sketchbooks that I've made. I've got a video for that to show you how I make these and I just love them. They're so light, like, I love them. I can make them the size that I want. If I want to carry two or three different sizes, it just is not weighing my backpack down. I love the paper. I've loved everything about these. Now, if I'm in the studio and just sketching or like in the den or watching TV and I'm sketching, I will still grab like my Royal Talons or some of my others. The other thing I, I continue to reach for and I found that I've really enjoyed taking with me on traveling mainly is my Art Toolkit palette here. I think this may be the largest one. I do have a video on my favorite watercolor and gouaches. There's watercolor and gouache in this palette. I use watercolor, I use regular gouache, I also use acrylic gouache, we'll get to that in a minute. But all of those are in a whole video here, so you can see that. So I'm not gonna go into these colors. We are going to do something next year though with a value that I want to show you how to make sure your palettes that you have have good value like different ranges of value in them, but this has been a go-to. I've taken this on the plane with me when we've traveled. I was kind of surprised. I thought maybe I would get in trouble, but I guess since they're dried and it's not wet. No, I remember what I thought I would get in trouble with was taking my pencil sharpener and I didn't get in trouble. I always get in trouble for anything. If you can get in trouble for it, I get in trouble for it. But this was super nice with like a water brush on plane or like if we were gonna be on a train or on a bus or in the car, I loved, loved, loved having that with me. The other thing that I use often when I'm going to be out on location plain air painting are my acrylic gouaches. In my video, I talk all about what's the difference between regular gouache and acrylic gouache, but just think of acrylic gouache just like acrylic paints, except that they dry completely matte. My favorites are this Turner gouache. I like Holbein gouache. I mainly have Turner gouache on here though. One of the things I like sticking with the same brand is because mainly for like cleanup because the lids all go on the same. I don't like when I have like three or four different brands of paint in here because then I have to fiddle with the lids. You know, because sometimes maybe two of the colors are kind of similar and I'm just fine with not them not being on the correct. If it's basically in the same, you know, I mean, I really don't even care if it's in the same family, but basically I want to get those lids on fast and get out because usually I have to pee if I'm out painting. You know what I mean? I'm like, I got to giddy up and go. Let me put you overhead and I want to talk about a few other items that I think I want to swatch for you and show you some examples of and we'll do that. Let me put you overhead. Okay, I think the next thing I want to show you or tell you about are the Neo Color Ones. I have really got into these Neocolor ones. First off, let me tell you, so Neocolor ones are not water soluble, where Neocolor twos are, I'll just stick my finger in there, water soluble. So if you don't want these to move, see that that doesn't move. This is nice in a sense, but for some reason, 
I have been reaching for these a lot. I had a very small palette, which I like, but I just found that I was using them a whole lot to like sketch things out before. So if this is like my paper, I would just kind of get the idea of things. And then I liked how those marks were staying. I've even been using these on my canvases to like sketch stuff out. And, you know, let's say I was doing a still life, just quickly kind of getting the area of things because I've liked how those marks have, after I've put paint over them, if it's a thin layer of paint, these marks will still show. And I'll show you that in a, in a painting that I did on canvas recently. But this is an example of that on a sketch I did at a park recently. So you can see here where some of these orange marks have shown through. They kind of will just show up all the way through. And I really, really like that. So even like here where I was doing the water, you can see some of those marks. You wouldn't notice that though if I didn't tell you. And so all it does is just adds depth. And I think at first it can feel scary because you can't envision what it's gonna look like at the end and how is this kind of stuff gonna be okay. I'm used to it and I, I know that those underneath lines are just gonna help. And then sometimes I've even over the top started going back over with those lines to accentuate them because I've liked them. And because they're wax, past, uh, wax are they wax pastels? I think that's what they're called. They, they just don't move like maybe an oil pastel would. I mean, you'd have to really, like right here, I mean, I can get some of that to move, but I'm having to work really hard. Here's another example of a painting I did recently, and you can see where I've used those Neocolor ones over top. And here's a little section where it was sketched early and painted over and just really all over this. Here in these grapes, you can see where I've sketched on top of it, or even like here where when I first initially was sketching the grapes in, just all over, you can see those marks left. And then here, right here were the oranges. I had been doing some circles for the oranges and it's left over. I think it really adds a nice quality to like the mark making and just the building up of layers. I really love how this one turned out. So that's some of what I've been doing with these. So I just recently, bought some more, added to my collection. The negative with these Neocolor 1s is there's not as big of a range as the Neocolor 2. So a lot of my favorite colors in the Neocolor 2, I could not find in the Neocolor 1, but that's actually a real blessing because, you know, then I'm not buying as much. But from the, the ones that I've had, I've really liked this ochre. They're very smooth too. There's just a nice smoothness. This is, something orange, rogue orange. That's a little bright. I forgot I have this one too. This is vermilion. I really like that one. This is a Payne's Gray. Uh, I love this one, which is, oh goodness, what is this one called? Wait, I just ordered another one of this. A replacement. On the name out here, this is all olive. They put like three different, yeah. It's olive. This one is Sanguine and Ultramarine. I don't use the white very much, but it can be nice. And then this Sahara Yellow. Then my new ones. I love this umber. Raw umber is super nice. It looks green on the package. Like it looks like it's gonna be that, but it's not. This is an olive. A yellow. I like this one a lot too. Light gray, light blue. This is Prussian blue, which is super nice too. It's not super bright and I love it. This is another favorite, salmon. Pink or rose. And burnt sienna. I'm gonna put it up here next to this one. It's a little more just brown. 
To me, it's not so burnt sienna-ish. This is light cobalt blue. So those I've really, really been enjoying. I hope I don't add too many more because I do like taking these out and they start getting heavy. <laughs> I'm in like, I need to lighten my load. You know what I mean? Okay, what have I not shown you? So another thing that I'm constantly reaching for and always take out with me are color pencils. Not gonna go through all like the brands and everything because I already have a favorites list. But as you can see, I mean, I use these quite a bit and I do have my favorite colors and I have some new favorites that I've been reaching for. I really like when they're small and they all fit in here but I have just recently bought several that I keep reaching for, like the new ones that I've really liked, like the sepia. And I also like the sepia 10%. It's not too gray, but it, it's got, it's like a nice neutral, but has color to it. I think the rest are on my list and with things that I always use. This is also another favorite though. I'm pretty sure it's in that video, gray blue. I like dirty colors. And I also just restocked up on my pimento, which is another favorite. I love sketching with an orange. I'll either use that orange or, oh my, this is not gonna have a number. This is an orange that is on my favorites list, but it's too tiny to read right now. Um, but oftentimes if I've got, again, this kind of thing, if I've got a painting or I'm going to be out painting, I'll just kind of do like a sketch to kind of get my composition. And then these colors like shine through, which I really like. So these have been a staple, whether, whether I'm on the couch sketching, if I'm out on location sketching or in the studio, these, my colored pencils, these Neocolor ones have been a consistent thing. Let's see, I already mentioned my acrylic gouache. Are there any new colors here that I wanted to tell y'all about? I don't think so. The reason I have kind of more colors here than I usually like to have on a palette is because when I'm out on location, I don't always have the time, the lid's not on this one, very good, to mix. And I will often not even take a palette. Why is that not going on? Oh, it's much jammed up in there. A palette, I will just stick my brush down in the tube. It's not like I wanna take a ton because um, they get heavy. I will also only use these if I'm working in my sketchbook. Because these dry completely matte, the pages will not stick together. What I've been doing is taking a pared down version of my studio palette. Let me turn it this way. If you want to know more about my acrylic paints, how I store them, you know, do I varnish, what mediums I use, can you intermingle acrylic gouache with regular acrylic, with acrylic inks, all, all the things about acrylics. I have a whole class on it. I'll link that below. But this palette looks quite complex, but it's not as complex as what it looks like. Um, because some of these mixes like these are where I've mixed primary colors on my palette to get browns and greens just for convenience colors. Instead of like buying a color like this, I mix it with the colors. Uh, I always have a warm and a cool of the primaries. I mean, I will have a burnt sienna because that's a color I use all the time and a raw umber because those are colors I use all the time. Like duck color, right? Raw umber, burnt sienna, raw sienna. Those are my kind of n natural colors and dirty ink colors that I use. But what I've been doing sometimes when I'm just going to be painting on paper out on location, like I talked about in my last video, I've been taking a pared down version of this. I have a smaller Tupperware and I just pick the primaries and then a couple of the colors I have in these small tubs. Like colors that I don't need a huge bottle of Prussian blue because it's such a strong staining color. I don't even have a big tub of it in this. So that's what I've been doing is when I'm painting on paper, I'll just take this out because this is actually, especially when it's pared down lighter than this. 
This is quite heavy. I will tell you a couple of my favorite colors and brands. So for the most part, I use Liquitex soft body acrylics. I love these. They're not too shiny. They're not completely matte, but they're not like, you know, the sunshine or shine like glass. You know, they're not real plasticky when they dry. I absolutely love them. And I buy them in these giant tubes, just the primary colors. However, I have been getting into some basics. There are some Liquitex basics that I really, really like. It's a completely different consistency. It's quite thick. They're not as pigmented either. So when you thin them down with water, like if I'm gonna put it in a tub, I will add water to it to thin it down to get it more like my Liquitex soft body. Sometimes I do that, I don't always do it, but it's not as pigmented. But for me, that's okay because I often build up layers anyways. The colors that I like the best, I've bought a lot of colors, but the ones that constantly go on my palette are this Cerulean Blue. Here, I need this and I will. I think it's just a super nice color. And I like the consistency and I like that it is, oh, I almost dipped that in my, my tea. <laughs> um, I kind of like that it gets thin. So that always is on my palette. I talk about this a lot, is the raw umber. I love the raw umber. It is the perfect consistency and color for me. It dirties up colors wonderfully. I will often add water to this because I don't like when my brush gets too thick. I want to be able to build up color. That's how I work most of the time. So I have 50 million tubes of this. And the other one I really like of the basics that I just bought a whole bunch of, or the bigger tubes, is their Quinecridone Magenta because again, it's really nice. <laughs> And it's just perfect. I really like it. And I like that I can get a big glob and it's fine because it will still go down thin because it's not like crazy pigmented. I mean, quinacridone is a transparent color anyways. The other color that I've bought a ton of this year is this parchment. And I talked about this in, was it the last video? I think it was. Yeah, because I, I bought some and I was doing an unboxing for y'all. But this is kind of a greenish. Well, I've got some pink in my brush. When it dries, and in last week's video, you can see it a little better. Get all these out of the way. When it dries, it's, it's a nice light color, but it does have this green tint to it. And I'm often dipping my brush, as I said in the last video, in this color instead of my white, because the white is so stark. I absolutely love this color. I don't thin it down on my palette either. Oh, see, I got some contamination in there, but isn't that a pretty yellow? There's a little bit of yellow there. So that is a color that I buy a ton of those tubes and it goes everywhere with me. I love, 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 love it. Oh, here is my contaminated thing of this that I keep on my palette. I just pour it in here. You can see how dirty it is. I don't mind that because for some reason it just doesn't really matter. So what I'll do is dip in here, dip in here, and then it's kind of like my white. My white usually gets quite contaminated and it's, it's just fine. It's just not gonna be a big deal. And then that will help it like on the canvas really, um, you can really thin it down and it's gonna adhere really well. Should we peel some of this together while we're here? <laughs> Would you like to uh, do this with me? I mean, look how satisfying. This is not completely dry. When it's completely dry, it comes up like a lot of times in one big thing and that is the most satisfying. I just usually can't wait for it to fully dry. Okay, literally I've been doing this. I've been putting this near the vent at night so it will be dry for me the next morning so I can have a nice pill experience. Because if it's not fully dry, it just won't completely come off in one thing and then I just sit here and like mess up my nails. Well, I, was, I mean, not like my nails are like amazing, but when you get like one big, the whole thing comes off in one big experience, it's just very satisfying. And look, now I've started and now I'm not gonna be able to stop. 
Okay, so I have this table set up right now that usually has just stuff all over it, but I've got some still life and other stuff. So at night, I've been putting my little things under here because there's the vent and then it like bounces up and it dries everything faster. So then I can have a nicer experience with peeling the paint in the morning. Little hot tip there, hot tip. Okay, I'm gonna make myself stop for just like, to be able to like sign off here. But as soon as we're done, I'm gonna come back to peeling the paint. All right, I wanted to tell y'all, wait, let me just stop because it will get obsessive. I wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for your support this year for watching, for liking, for leading, leaving such kind comments. You guys are just the best. It's been a great year with y'all. And we've covered the gamut this year of so much stuff. And it's been fun to like share my process, share my growth here. You basically can watch like a ton of my, you know, art journey and my progression here. We have got so much exciting stuff for you for next year. I can barely handle it, but this has been a really fun year and you guys are absolutely the best. I cannot wait to see you in the new year. Got some new announcements for you in January and hopefully in the coming months, I'm going to have some like mind blowing stuff to tell you about that I can't wait. Hope you guys had a good Christmas and I will see you back here next year in two weeks. Bye guys, you are the best. Thank you for all your kindness, for watching the channel. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all the things. Thanks, love you guys, y'all are the best. Mm -hmm.